If you've ever almost died at a public range, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, <laughs> guys. Like and comment. The comment section is out of control. I would love to hear a story of how you almost died at a public range because they can get a little crazy at times. If you guys are looking to support the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. 99 cents for the first month. Is it worth it? Well, are you worth it? We, of course, have our other sponsors for this particular video. We have the Big D Bag, which is a dude box subscription thing. Discount code Grantham for a sick knife with it. We, of course, have Sword International. Sword International um, is uh, collaborating with me sounds diabolical, on a pretty cool rifle with a cool paint job and all that kind of stuff. So definitely go check them out. They make some great stuff. We have, finally, USCCA, concealed carry insurance, not applicable in every state, but definitely go check them out. Lots of great resources. Big thank you to our sponsors right there. Ladies, gentlemen, often forgotten, but most certainly not by me. AK5Cs, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a very cool Pistol, thank you ATF for the retarded rules. But in any case, we have a pistol here. This is obviously a pistol. And this is the Galil Ace. Um, a pretty cool design that I've wanted to do a review on for a long time, um, just to get some hands-on time with it. I've kept it mostly stock except for about one or two things. And we'll kind of talk about why I've done that. But in any case, What's really important to me is before we get into this, what is my relationship with this company? So full disclosure, as we always do. So full disclosure, um, I've talked with EWE for a while about doing different rifle reviews, you know, whether it be the Tavor or the Galil Ace and that type of stuff. Um, there's been no exchange of money or ammunition. Uh, ammunition in this case was provided for by LX Ammunition. Um, in any case, even if uh, there was an exchange of ammunition for the review, which is pretty typical, um, and in no way it influences my opinion on the weapon. Um, I don't hold uh, any punches despite any of that stuff. It's just me talking about how I feel about a weapon. So can I be wrong? Absolutely. But otherwise, I just tell you guys what I think. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into it. So the Galil Ace is basically a modernized Galil. So we have the same operating mechanism with a couple things added to it. And uh, it's that same Galil, you know, design, which is a reliable system. It is a long stroke gas <laughs> piston system, much like the Grand, the AKM, and many other weapons out there. And it is a remarkably reliable, robust platform with a couple drawbacks, just like there's a drawback to any system out there. But in any case, this particular Galil is in 762 by 39, which is your you know, classic caliber that your typical AKMs are in or AK-47s, all that kind of stuff. But on this particular rifle, there are a couple quirks. So let's go ahead and let's get into this. First off, muzzle device. So this is obviously an OSS muzzle device. This is not a um, typical one from Iwi. The typical one from Iwi is your basic birdcage flash hider, and it does okay. The problem is we have a very short barrel. So we have an 8.3 inch barrel which is fine. Uh, 762 by 39 does very well short barrels, but you have to accept that if you're going to buy a weapon like this, instead of say the rifle with a 16 inch barrel, you're gonna have a lot more flash. You just have a lot more powder. And because of that, it is very hard to tame that flash. So at night, it might be an issue uh, with being seen. I don't know what you're doing with these rifles or what shenanigans you guys are getting up to. But in any case, this thing does have a ridiculous fireball. So the birdcage does not do a great job of hiding that flash. Neither does this OSS muzzle device. With a suppressor, it is slightly better, but you're just getting a lot of flash with um, even with a suppressor on, just because you have a very short barrel. There's just a nut hole. Uh, there's not a whole lot that you can do about it, and that's just something that you're going to have to to kind of accept. And if you're wanting to run a very um, you know, low signature weapon, uh, you're planning on suppressing the shit out of this, you should probably go with a rifle version, in my opinion. Otherwise, you're still going to get a little bit of flash, especially at night. Now, the barrels are remarkably accurate. Um, no problems. Well, you know, to about 200, I'm seeing very good accuracy with these. Uh, and again, after that, I'm starting to see some drop off, not of accuracy, but rather of uh, the slug itself after it's left the barrel, just due to the um, there's just not a whole lot of velocity behind it, but it is definitely a very accurate barrel. Iwi does great stuff as far as their machining and all that is concerned, and the barrel is no slouch. Now, 
When it comes to the gas system, this is kind of how this all ties together. And this is my main complaint against the Galil is that the Galil Ace in 762 by 39, the pistol, I'm not sure about the rifle. I haven't had a lot of hands-on time with it, not enough to say anything. It is a very over-gassed system. Does that matter? Well, it might, because I understand why you would overgas a system. You need, you need the weapon to be able to operate through dust and grit and grime and to power through it, much like the AK-416, or to some extent, AKs are typically overgassed. But the Galil is exceptionally so, and I was wondering if it would do any better than, say, the AKs or other rifles out there, but compared to your typical AKM pattern rifles, I didn't see um, really that much of a difference in reliability. They seem to about to fail at about the same point when put into Death Lake that we have on our range. So it's not really gonna have any trouble with any of this. We're just gonna wait for the bubbles to die out, but it should be pretty simple. I guess it holds a lot of air. Function, try again. All right, it's good. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll go to mud. Oh. I don't feel like that was a great test, but yeah, I'll be fine. All right, we're out. So, uh, I would say reliable overall as you can see in the video there speaks for itself um other acams perform very similar to the glial ace so uh, it's not exceptionally um more reliable than an akm in fact it seems about to be out on par with there and that's not a bad thing the akm is a very reliable platform but i was wondering if the a if the glial would be you know significantly more reliable in adverse conditions due to the amount of overgassing that does not seem to be the case um, and the overgassing does cause problems because if you use a traditional suppressor on your Galil um, those are going to increase the amount of back pressure in the system which is going to increase pressure which is going to make um, for a horrifically overgassed system so it's for that reason that on uh, my Galil, I'm going to use a flow-through suppressor like the OSS suppressor, which works fairly well in not increasing back pressure. Um, I did put a, uh, a dead air on this, and dead airs are great suppressors for most weapons out there, but on the Galil, just too much back pressure, and it was not good at all. So that is something to think about with the Galil pistol if you're planning on doing that. Another problem with the overgassing is it does give you a lot more recoil than you should really get from this type of weapon. In fact, the, the recoil feels closer to like an 11 inch FAL, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, I don't mean to harp on it too much. I just, I do believe that the Galil pistol is overgassed. Crucify me later on it, but that's my opinion on it. Now the gas issue can be solved with the KNS adjustable gas piston. But for the sake of the review, I wanted to review the rifle mostly as I got it, um, except for the muzzle device, just so I could see how it felt and that type of stuff. So again, you can solve some of the overgassing issues with that KNS adjustable um, gas piston, and I would definitely recommend that if you're planning on shooting the Galil a lot. Now that brings us to our next point, which is handguard. I am not particularly fond of the handguard. There are better handguards out there from RS Regulate and many others, but uh, the overall design is just not great in my opinion, um, and the reason for that is that yeah, it could be made a lot skinnier, it could be made to be ventilated a little bit better to help the weapon cool off. And the biggest thing is that with you know a modernized Galil, why have the fixed front sight post? I understand that it's very sturdy and durable, but why not extend the rail all the way out and then have a mounted front sight? And that would allow you to remove it or do whatever you need. And that would allow you to get further out on the gun. Because again, there is not a lot of real estate when it comes to the fore end of this gun. So it's just something that could have really helped with this particular system. Now, that being said, the rail mounting platforms for um, optics and everything else are very sturdy. I haven't noticed any shift in zero when cleaning the weapon and remounting them. If it has been something, it's been very minimal and that I haven't noticed. 
So this is a very sturdy system. They have done an excellent job with that. Um, this particular optic that I have on here is an 8.T2. A lot of people have noted that the optic is very low. It is not. What you need to look at is the height of your cheek compared to the height of the optic. If you were to have a typical AR height optic, you'd have a very, very tall, um, you know, cheek to, to height ratio. You'd have to like have a giraffe neck or something like that. So um, on the glial, I would definitely recommend a lower mount. Otherwise you're gonna be having like that chin weld, which, you know, I understand for some people it might be the thing, but for me, that isn't it. The iron sights are quite good. Um, they're straight on the other side. Peep sets are good, elevation, adjustments, everything is excellent on them. I do like the iron sights quite a bit, and they did a great job with them, except for the issues I've noted earlier about placement. Now, moving next, we have the magazine well. So I will say first off that the reloads on the glial are a little bit weird and good at the same time, simply due to the space between the release for the for the magazine and kind of you know where the magazine is itself. It's a little closer on your typical AKM type clones and it's a little bit further on the glial. So I find the reloads to be a little bit awkward. Now, this is a magazine well, so that means when you insert a magazine, it does have a tendency to get in there in exactly the right position. So I have found the reloads to be easier compared to like an AKM, but some people have noted that this has caused issues on certain magazines. I haven't had that issue. Um, every magazine that I've used has worked well in the Galil, whether that be Bulgarian Circle Tens, which is surprising. Um, mag poles, um, typical AKM mags, all that type of stuff has been fine for me, but it should be noted that some people have said that the magazine well has caused problems. There is a magazine well deletion kit from KNS that could get rid of a lot of those issues and people say it looks a lot better with that particular lower on there. Um, I haven't had a chance to test it yet. And again, I will in the future when I trick this thing out, but it should be noted that I haven't had any problems, but many others have, so we can't discount their experiences. The grip on the Glial actually feels really good to me. Um, I really enjoy the way it feels. It's a good angle. It's about the right size for my hand and everything feels good when it comes to that. Now, that does bring us to the safety. I am not a fan of the safety on the Galils, and I've said that before, but it just does not feel good to me. So on the Galil, ace, we have a typical type Galil safety. So you press it forward to go into fire and you press it back to go into safe. It's not, I find it very stiff. Um, I don't find it easy to actuate due to the size of the grip. I kind of have to release my grip in order to push into it. Um, it's just, I don't find it as intuitive as other safeties out there. And to be honest, I almost find AK safeties a little bit better. And I don't find this one particularly ambidextrous because if I'm using it on the opposite side, um, I'm still either pushing it with my trigger finger or you know, in some unknown way, I'm utilizing it. So I'm sure it's gonna work for some people. I just don't find the safety on the Galil to be that good in my opinion. And is that my personal bias? Most likely, I'll admit that, but I just don't like the way it feels, opinion. Now, I will say one of my favorite things about the Glial is the left-handed charging handle. This thing is awesome. Um, I've always loved left-handed charging handles because that way when you're loading a new mag in, so you pop out the old one, pop in the new one, instead of having to reach under like an AK, you can simply, as soon as you rock it in, charge the weapon and you're back up. Um, it's very quick, a lot of Great weapons have left-handed charging handles, including the FAL, and I absolutely love them. So that was an excellent choice. And another very cool thing is the spring-loaded little dust cover right here that moves around the bolt as it moves. As you can see right here, you can see it in the video as well. So that is very FNC-like. It is certainly not the first or the last weapon that will use that. Helps keep that dust out. They did an excellent job. Um, I'm very appreciative of the effort that was put into that and that works phenomenally well. So that being said, it should be noted that the bolt, the bolt carrier, the lower, everything is machined very beautifully. They have done an excellent job on finishing, just the overall looks and the quality time that they put into it. Um, I've also not noted any abnormal wear. That being said, I should note that my round count is much lower than what it typically is. I ended at about 1400 rounds. Unfortunately, the ammo crisis has hit everybody, and because of that, I wasn't able to shoot quite as much as I typically do. That being said, I don't expect that the Galil Ace 
in any length or configuration would be a weapon that would have reliability problems or problems with longevity. And I think that absolutely applies to the Galil Ace. So we've ignored it for long enough. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go set trigger together. Go ahead and put your finger right over mine. It's not weird, not if you're in the Navy. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna feel that trigger together. We're gonna ghost it. So a little Unchained Melody. Okay, feeling, so we have our first creep into the pole. Feels about, yeah, very nice actually. Okay, charge that, feeling that reset. That's how far I have to let the trigger forward before the weapon is operable again. Okay, let that trigger forward. Reset, definitely springs your uh, finger into place at that, from that reset, that pull, quite nice. Feels about six, seven pounds, maybe a little bit more. It is definitely a Galil AK-like military trigger with a heavier poundage on the pull, but that isn't a bad thing. Galil and AK triggers are pretty acceptable in my opinion and feel pretty good. And that definitely applies to the Galil. Um, definitely good as far as a military trigger is concerned. I have no issues with it. And I think it feels pretty good overall. Now, is it comparable to say a good AR trigger? Absolutely not, so we're close, but for a uh, AK and a Galil, it does feel good. It is acceptable. We'll give it a pass, we'll say, okay. So we do have the brace adapter right here, which allows the whole mechanism to fold. So if you wanna shoot this close or from enclosed spaces, that type of thing, you can absolutely do that. Um, no issues there. It is stiff enough to not come undone, like unlike certain other designs uh, while you're shooting. So that is good. We have an SB brace, no issues. Those are of course good products right there. And we have, the Galil Ace. You know, there are certain weapons when I shoot them, I just say, wow, like this is a wonderful weapon. Um, the Galil doesn't quite kind of do it for me personally. Um, the overgassing causes this weapon to recoil harder than it should. It's kind of, it's very snappy compared to other 7.62 guns that I fired. Um, the ergonomics are a little weird for me uh, in regards to the safety. Uh, again, the reloads are nice. Um, it retains zero well. Uh, it is you know, plenty accurate. So it's, it's a fine weapon. I just believe that as it comes from the factory, it's kind of lacking uh, a couple things that it should have for a modernized Galil. So it, it's kind of, it kind of doesn't do it for, doesn't do it for me. Um, I'm sure that will piss some people off. I'm sure for a lot of people, they'll really like the Galil. I mean, the point is, I mean, if you have a Galil and you're like, trying to base your entire existence off this review, you're wrong first off, because this is my opinion. The weapon is perfectly fine. It's just, I wouldn't prefer it. I wouldn't uh, put the money into it. If I was starting out and I was looking to buy a kind of one-time you know, rifle or pistol, depending on what configuration you bought. That being said, if you have the chance, go to the range, check it out. If it works for you, go ahead and buy it. Uh, certainly they are reliable, certainly they are accurate, and certainly they have longevity on their side. So there's no issues there. I just think that there are weapons that are perhaps superior in terms of ergonomics and overall recoil and that type of thing. So Galil Ace SAR, we'll be doing some more reviews on some of the rifles and see how we like those. But in any case, what really matters when it comes to these weapons is going to be training. Make sure you get training. There are tons of great places to get training. We have Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic, uh, Tony Cowden, uh, tons of guys, guys out there. Definitely go check them out, get that knowledge. So the point is, is that no matter the weapon that you have, it's, if it's reliable, if it can hit what it's shooting at, and if it has that longevity on its side, you have a good weapon. Make yourself that weapon as well. If you are not good, then it's not going to matter. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you guys. Be safe out there. I got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys. Get off social media. Spend time with your family and your friends. Invest in yourselves and in your education, knowledge. Get better. Make the world a better place. Be kind. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you had a great holidays. New Year is coming. Do great things in this new year. Love you guys. You guys know if you have made it this far that we're going to rep Survival Dispatch. Survival Dispatch is a repository of survival information. Highly recommend it as a former survival guy. It absolutely matters. Get that knowledge and that information. Final shout out to my Patreon people. Love you guys. You have made this channel what it is, and I can't thank you enough. Ladies and gentlemen, stay safe. Love you guys. Stay tuned for next week.